Hello and welcome to my review of the Creality Spider V2 hotend. So to start off, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. So my Ender 3 has had a knockoff Micro Swiss all metal hotend installed for around a year. So my specific knockoff was made by Big Tree Tech, but you can likely find this exact same hotend from other sellers on Amazon or AliExpress. It worked reasonably well for a while, but recently I haven't been able to print out any parts because the nozzle clogs after the first retract. So it's pretty likely that either abrasives in the filament or just over time, the inner surface has worn down on the heat break, which is causing all of the clogging. So I decided that it was probably time to replace this hot end, and I started taking a look on Amazon for a replacement. So if you decide that you need to replace your hot end, you have a few options to look at. So you could replace it with a stock Ender 3 hot end. You can get a knockoff or an actual Creality hot end, and this is definitely the cheapest option. But these hot ends are only really suitable to print PLA because at higher temperatures, the Teflon tube that goes into the heat break can cause some issues with some toxic fumes. So if you only print PLA, this is a pretty good option, but if you want to print anything more exotic, you'll have to look elsewhere. I like to print some weirder materials, so I started to take a look at some of the all metal options for the Ender 3. The long-standing choice is from Micro Swiss, and it's a good choice and is reviewed very well by most people online. But this option is a little boring for me personally, and at 90 bucks is pretty steep for something that will have pretty much the same performance as the original hot end. The other option you could go for is what I originally did, which was to buy a knockoff Micro Swiss. But these can be pretty hit or miss. If they even work properly, they can also have problems printing specific materials. For example, my old hot end didn't do very good at printing TPU. You could also buy an E3D hot end and print a mount for the ender. And while this is a decent option, uh, you would have to change your nozzle offsets and it would be a little less plug and play than most of the other solutions. So in my continued search, I stumbled upon the Creality Spider 2.0 hot end. Now, I hadn't heard anything about this from any of the creators I watch online. But it does seem to tick a lot of my boxes. High temp printing, bimetallic heat break, pretty good structural design, an easy installation, and it looks pretty cool. But as any rational consumer does, I went to look for some reviews online and found that there wasn't really anything. Everyone seems to be buying this hot end's big brother, the Spider Pro. But I don't really want a high flow hot end because they have their own set of drawbacks. So I decided I would take the plunge on the Spider 2.0 and I figured even if it was bad, I would still get a video out of it. So my Spider came in a bag, which has both a cartridge thermistor and the hot end box inside. Now it's noteworthy to mention that not all of the resellers on Amazon or AliExpress will actually bundle in a cartridge style thermistor with the hot end. Now, the hot end does come with a small adapter for the glass bead thermistor that comes with your ender, but I wouldn't recommend using this because the thermistor can simply just fall out of the adapter. So it's almost a necessity that you either buy one separately or just make sure whichever seller that you are buying from actually bundles one with the hot end. So moving on to the actual contents, there is the hot end itself and a little bag with thermal grease, a few wrenches, and that thermistor adapter. Now the hot end itself felt really heavy and really high quality compared to the Micro Swiss knockoff that I had in there before. So with the hot end out of the box, it was time to move on to installation. So the first thing to do is to remove your Ender 3's fan shroud from the X-axis carriage. Once that's done, heat the hot end up to a working temperature and unscrew the set screws that hold both the thermistor and the heater cartridge in and remove both of those from the heater block. And then you can remove the two screws that are holding the hot end in place. And after that, you can pull the hot end out of the way. So here I was also comparing the two. They seem like they're pretty much the exact same dimensions besides the slightly larger heat sink on the spider. So the next step was to wire in the new thermistor. So I cut the old one off and got ready to solder some connectors onto the wires. Now you don't actually have to solder these, mine came with a full length thermistor wire but I was actually too lazy to route it through and this was the easier solution for me. If you do decide to solder it, the polarity on the connections does not matter. And once those were soldered up and covered with heat shrink, I was ready to move on to the next step. For me this was that I had to cut a new small piece of Bowden tube that goes between my direct drive extruder and the hot end itself. If you use a Bowden extruder I wouldn't worry about cutting this tube at all. After that was done, I mounted the hot end with the two included M3 cap screws and opened up the thermal grease that Creality included with the hot end. 
Once they were both covered in thermal compound, I installed them into the hot end. Now, I actually put them in backwards here, so here's a clip where they're put in the correct orientation. Both the heater cartridge wire and the thermistor wire should be coming out of the left side of the hot end. So after that, I put the hot end sock on and mounted this fan shroud back over the hot end, and we were ready for action. Oh, right, and the actual final last thing that I did was run a PID auto-tune. You can use the command that I had on screen there, and I'll put that in the description below. Uh, if you have a TFT35, you can directly enter this on the printer. If not, you can use a computer or put it onto an SD card. So back when I had the Micro Swiss knockoff still installed, I ran a flow test at a few different flow rates on the printer. And I did the same thing with the Spider once it was installed. So once that was done, I actually went to measure out the weight of each of these samples, but turns out that my roommate scale that I was boring wasn't even nearly accurate enough to be able to measure the weight of these small extrusion tests. So my apologies, but you'll have to be okay with my more empirical evaluation of each of the flow tests. So to my completely subjective viewpoint, it seemed to me like the extrusions were pretty similar up to around 22 millimeters cubed per second, where the spider hot end took a very, very slight lead. But overall, they were pretty similar, which is fine since the spider isn't supposed to be a high flow hot end. So overall, I think if you're picking a hot end to print fast, this probably isn't the best choice on the market. So you might be asking yourself, well, what about different materials? Well, to test that out, I tried printing a Benchy out of the four most popular 3D printing materials, those being PLA, TPU, ABS, and PTG. So the first one off the press was the blue PLA Benchy, and it looks pretty much perfect. There isn't really any problems with stringing, the material looks pretty well extruded, and overall it looks really, really nice. The next one that I printed was out of Creality ABS, and while the actual extrusion looks pretty good, there's definitely some issues where it unstuck from my bed, but that's not really the hot end's fault. So overall, I would still say that the extrusion itself was acceptable. The PTG print looks pretty good. There's definitely some stringing, but that's likely due to the lack of tuning on my slicer profiles. PTG used to give me a ton of problems with my old knockoff hot end, so it was really encouraging to see that the spider was able to print it with no problems at all. And the final and, in my opinion, hardest test was TPU, and this was absolutely awesome. Uh, out of all the benchies I've ever printed out of TPU, this was the best one I've done. This material also used to give me huge problems in the knockoff hot end, but the spider was able to handle it no problem at all. So these were the four materials that I had access to for testing, but I have no doubt that it would be able to print pretty much any consumer material on the market. And the final test that I wanted to do was just testing the printer's reliability with the new hot end. To do this, I printed off a bunch of parts for my girlfriend's electric skateboard project that I'm working on, video on that coming out soon, uh, and I tested it out on printing about six different parts in PLA. So over the course of all this printing, around 40 hours worth, I didn't have a single issue from the hot end at all. All of the prints turned out beautifully, and I have no real concern with the long-term reliability of this hot end, but I'll definitely make sure to update the comments below if anything happens in the future. So, what do I think about this hot end? Well, honestly, I think it's a great choice if you're looking for a high temp all metal hot end uh, for your Ender 3 or Creality series printer. I know that the old Spider V1 had a fair few bad reviews, but it seems like they've honestly improved everything that I've seen on that for this specific hot end. So I think that this fits into a pretty good place in the market for people who don't really want a high flow hot end, but also want all of the premium features that those high flow hot ends typically have. The bimetallic heat break is awesome, the structural design is sweet, and I like the new style cartridge thermistors because they're a little bit more confidence inspiring than the glass bead ones. So yeah, if you've been looking for an upgrade for your printer, I would definitely not hesitate. I think this is a great option. Thank you so much if you made it this far, and happy printing.